The problem is poverty. Starting when I was eight years old, every summer I spent working for farmers alongside migrant laborers from southern Mexico. They were living on the farms or in their cars. Their story just intrigued me and stuck with me and planted these seeds of social justice and interest in, in international development. Eventually that path took me back to agricultural land and, and the fields that I had been working on and recognizing that if people actually could get secure rights to this most important asset where they lived, then that creates a foundation for them to grow more food, to earn more income, to send their kids to school and become educated and on, on an upward social and economic path. About three quarters of the world's poorest people live in rural areas where land is the most important asset. Most of them are relying on land-based livelihoods. They lack access or secure rights to this most important asset. Addressing it kind of one person or one village at a time was not going to be enough. Take the country of India, for example, which has the largest number of poor people on the planet. Most of the poorest are in rural areas and as it turns out, landlessness is the best predictor of poverty. So it's a much better predictor of poverty than is illiteracy. It's a much better predictor of poverty than is membership in a backward caste. It's those families who don't have that most important asset, that piece of land that becomes a source of nutrition, a source of income, a source of uh, credit access, a source of status. In India as a whole, you have about 20 million rural households who are in that situation that are completely landless, yet they rely on agriculture for their livelihood. The Indian government in decades past understood the connection between landlessness and poverty and tried to address it by giving landless families full-sized farms. The problem with that approach was that a full-size farm in that setting might be three acres of land. You multiply three acres of land times the 20 million families and you get an amount of land that's something like 25 to 40 percent of all the agricultural land in the country. If you look at it that way, it was really impossible to address it. What our research, when we started looking at it closely, realized is that the first tenth of an acre for a landless family gave by far the most benefits. It gave them a place to build a house, a place to keep a few animals, plant a garden, and give them that foundation. So all of a sudden it becomes doable because you can start doing that by purchasing land and using private land markets to get that access. Eventually it led to programs that helped these poor landless families get a tenth of an acre of land. The world that we're trying to create is one where poor rural people have the opportunity to pull themselves out of poverty. It's not about a handout. I truly believe that every person has the motivation, but not always the opportunity to pull oneself out of poverty. There's, there's a common maxim about, rather than giving people a fish, teach them how to fish or equip them with a fishing pole We'd take that a bit further and say, who owns the pond? Or who owns the water in which they fish? And in, in, in many of the cases, that's the biggest constraint, is not having ownership of, of the asset. And giving them ownership often is that opportunity that they lack.